There's a new director for Cook County. They have some brave goals for how they want to change the system and make it better. And it is incumbent upon CASA to collaborate with DCFS, with the attorneys, with our judges, and find out how are we all going to work together. It is our CASAs that will bridge the gap in those conversations. And where our judges cannot be, where the attorneys cannot be, where the caseworkers cannot be, our CASAs can be. <coughs> and the linchpin to all of this is the CASA will put their work into a court report. The court report is handed into the judge and to all the attorneys on the case for the child. And our judges will rely on these court reports when making the decisions about what to do with these children. This is the most powerful tool that CASA has in terms of serving our children and collaborating with the system because we are communicating in that court report what we have investigated, what we have seen, and what we'd like to advocate for. It sounds like a perfect process, and it sounds great, but our need here in Cook County cannot be overstated. And the call to action cannot be overstated. I said before that there's 5,780 5 children in the system. You can see from the bottom of that slide, CASA currently serves 123 children out of 5,780. <clears throat> Government funds, although we are called CASA of Cook County, and we serve the county, and we, uh, we collaborate with the county, Government funds account for less than a percent of my operating budget. And every day, especially our presiding judge, Judge Martin, every day our judges constantly ask us, can you take on more children? Can I assign this kid to you? Can I assign this set of siblings to you? The call happens every day because our judges want us to serve more children. Now, it's a real downer when you hear those kind of statistics. And even for, even for me and my team, those statistics should be daunting. But I smile, I always like to smile, uh, anyway. <laughs> but I smile, and these things are not daunting because at Casa of Cook County, we have a plan. When I took the helm at Casa in 2015, we set out to galvanize the Chicago community and rally Chicago around our children and our mission for these children. We wanted to tell Chicago about what our CASAs were doing. Because as I met with current and potential funders, I realized one very important fact. And I wouldn't be surprised if many of you come up to me after this and tell me the exact same thing. I realized that many people in Chicago were actually not aware of our 5,000 780 children, nor were they aware of the great work that our volunteers were doing. These are everyday people with everyday jobs. We've got a chief human resources officer, we've got an attorney, we've got a law student. Uh, these are everyday people spending 10 to 15 hours doing this work. But what we had done at CASA is we had relied on historical relationships to keep the organization afloat, and unfortunately that's no longer good enough. So we immediately set out to do this, to tell Chicago about what we were doing, to say, this is what's going on in our city. This is who our children are. And I'll tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I couldn't tell you how many times I've heard the phrase, I had no idea. But I'm encouraged every time I hear it, because it's automatically followed by, how can we help? Chicago has really started to rally around our children and rally around the work that had been done for so many years prior to my getting here. And what, we st what we're starting to see now, and I hope that you're all going to be just as excited as I am and smile when I smile, is we're starting to realize that Chicago is starting to adopt what my volunteers, what my judges, and what my team knew all along that it's not right that today there are 5,780 children that don't have a safe and permanent place that they can call home. In the year and a half since our strategic plan when we implemented it in May of 2015, we reopened intake of new cases. So 
when I got here and my judges were telling me, Mark, when are you going to be able to, when am I going to be able to assign this judge, uh, this child to you, that child to you, this set of siblings to you? In March of 2016, we said, yes, judges, send us your kids. But we also said we have very limited resources, so send us the ones who need us the most first. Send us the ones where you're really saying, I need a, an extra set of eyes. And those are the cases that have been coming in. We rebuilt and strengthened our relationship with the Department of Children and Family Services. I sit in meetings with Director Sheldon and with his Cook County Regional Director, Jackie Collier, because one of the things that we're also gonna do at CASA, and if you get involved with us, you'll realize this, is CASA needs to be part of the larger solution here in Chicago. We can no longer be siloed, you know, because that's a knock on a lot of youth uh, organizations or work that's being done is, well, why are we all so siloed? Why are we working separately? So we meet with DCFS and with other leaders because we want to be part of the bigger solution. We want to be part of the bigger conversation. And rightly so, we should be there. We've seen a significant growth in our revenues because people have been asking us, how can we help? In fact, one of the biggest grants that we got was to relaunch a program, and this one is an important one. This program teaches life skills to our older youth in care. For we have a lot of older foster youth that are about to age out of the foster care system, and the challenge that they face is when you're in the foster care system, at least you have a caseworker that's, that has to follow up with you. Right? The moment you're out of the foster care system, there's nobody who's going to follow up with you. But our older youth will leave the foster care system not knowing how to cook, not knowing how to use a washing machine, not knowing how to write a resume, a cover letter, not knowing how to look for an apartment, not knowing how to not get kicked out of an apartment, not knowing how to conduct yourself in a job interview. But we relaunched recently the Creating Independent Transitions for Youth or City program through a major grant that we've received. And in fact, tomorrow night we're going down the street to Willis Tower. We're gonna to be taking 16 youth to work with the HR and legal departments of United Airlines. They're gonna be learning about how to write a resume, uh, business etiquette, and how to conduct yourself in an interview. This is only one example of the great things that Chicago is doing to rally around our children. One of the other great events that I'll share with all of you is Play Your Part Chicago. We were talking about it um, earlier. It's a partnership with the Toy Industry Foundation. We fill Comiskey Park, so Cubs fans, I'm sorry, I'll try to go to Wrigleyville uh, eventually. But we go to Comiskey Park and we fill it, we fill the patio room of the ballpark with about 350 children. I think this, this past summer, I know what, 400? 400 children. Each child walks into the patio room and they see the room is filled with toys and they get to pick out two brand new toys. Not hand-me-downs, they're brand new toys. Radio Flyer, Transformers, He-Man, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But not only that, they get to have games, they get to work with CPD, uh, they get to work with the Chicago Fire Department, they're there with their Survival Live truck. President Preckwinkle came last year, Superintendent Johnson came this year. But the most amazing part, ladies and gentlemen, of Player Part Chicago is that CASA, we have a team of eight. We would not be able to do this event on our own. But I found myself standing in that patio room and it was very emotional because in the room, we had volunteers from UPS, Willis Towers Watson, Bank of America, Lock Lord, and multiple other corporations all there for the day for our children. They're there putting toys together, moving tables and chairs. It's an amazing sight and I hope many of you come to see it. But this is just an exa another example of how the Chicago community is really coming, and here are some pictures for everybody. The Chicago community is really starting to answer the call for what we're trying to do. Because of this amazing momentum that we've only done in a year and a half, it's allowed my team and I to look more long-term to, to the other goals that we have. We've strengthened our screening and training procedures for new CASAs. In fact, uh, tomorrow we'll have a meet and greet for 42 new volunteers. They're coming to the uh, Cook County Juvenile Center to meet the team and learn about what they do. We implemented a new case management software so we can actually have accurate reporting 
of our data outcomes. And we've started to have conversations with our partners in the Cook County Juvenile Center of where else do you need us? Where else were you, would you like us? You know, one of the biggest issues that I'll share with, uh, with all of you is right now, one of the issues in the Cook County Juvenile Center is what do we do about dually involved youth? Dually involved youth are youth that have a case open in the child protection side, but they also committed a felony, so they also have a felony case open. It's two different judges, two different systems. Because of confidentiality, both sides are not allowed to talk. So you're gonna have a child on the child protection side where the judge is gonna say, I think this child needs to go to therapy services at Northwestern. But then you're gonna have a judge on the other side who could potentially say, this, chi this child should have a home confinement and they're on probation. So what do you do? If you're that child and you have to go to therapy, the moment you step out of the door, you're in violation of your probation. But CASA can help because our volunteer will be able to go to both hearings. We'll be able to put that into the court report. And we told that to our presiding judge and her reaction was, can you really do it? You want me to assign kids to you now? You want me to tell my judges? And we said, absolutely. You should absolutely assign us to that. This is the kind of momentum that we're building. I'll share with you one of the greatest things that we've uh, recently uh, accomplished. Our director of development hit a home run, um, secured for us uh, an AmeriCorps grant. This grant is valued, is a six-figure grant, and it will allow us to hire um, ad administrative staff to report to the development director, the programs director, and the uh, director of recruitment and training because my staff has been terribly overburdened and stretched very thin wearing multiple hats. But this grant is a game changer for us because it expands our capabilities to serve. And the funniest part to me is for the first time in Casa Cook County's history, we can actually say we have real departments. We have real departments with real teams working in each department. I share all of these with all of you. I'll show you more pictures as well. That's Oscar uh, Munoz, by the way, the CEO of United Airlines. Uh, he was at our last uh, uh, module, uh, city module. I share all of this with all of you because I hope I'm, I'm doing an effective job of communicating to you the passion and the excitement that my volunteers have and my judges have for our children. I hope that in some small way, I'm able to infect this room with the momentum and the excitement and the hope that we have for our 5,780 children because we have a plan at Casa of Cook County. And make no mistake, we drive really hard at the Casa office. I remember one time I came home from a, a meeting and Edna yelled out, everybody put on your big boy pants. Mark just got home from a meeting. He's got ideas. <laughs> but it was true. We drive really hard at the Casa office and our volunteers work really hard because we know it's not right that we're only serving 123 children and we have to assign more CASAs to more children. <clears throat> and now we have a fixed time. Now we have a Northern Star that we're, that we're working towards. Now we have momentum. And this is an exciting time for the CASA office. So I wanna thank you all for allowing me to be here, to share our victories with you, to share our uh, challenges with you. I wanna thank everybody for uh, being willing to listen to what we're doing. I hope that many of you will uh, stay afterwards, take a little bit of time to chat with me about what we're doing, chat with my director of development, Edna Ho, uh, two of my board members, Mr. Tim Ressmeyer over here and Mr. Rick Cobb over there, my good friend, uh, John Paul Ferrer over here. John Paul actually sat me down, I think, were we here at the, the university club? Um, I asked John Paul for help when I first took the helm at CASA. And he sat me down, poured me a coffee, and said, what's your plan? And I got him to support me. So I must have had a great plan. So please take some time to talk to all of us. We'd love to share more of our stories. And I'm gonna end this by leaving all of you with a, a saying that we say at my CASA office all the time. My team is probably sick of hearing me say it. But I'll say it here. Thank you so much and onward and upward. Thank you.